This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Four Sigmatic. Join the mushroom coffee revolution at foursigmatic.com slash Spartan. Well, so we're going to go uh, talk to Ryan Mitchell. I think you guys are going to enjoy him. You, you might just because of the beard, so you guys can bond a little bit. But Brothers and beards. Brothers and beards. Here's his, a guy, his beard's a little more impressive than mine. Here's a guy who's put Red together beard. Order of Man, and he's out there, and he's trying to tell men how to be men, the lost art of being manly, and more than just chopping wood and being strong and stuff, more spiritual, all those types of things. So anyway, I think he's got a lot of good lessons for us all. Uh, both men and women. Uh, so anyway, we'll go give them a any, listen. Any, any secrets we'll learn? I think we will. We'll learn their secrets of manliness. Here's right. a secret. That's Joe. I'm Sephra. Colonel and I, Johnny, <laughs> and Mary behind the camera. And now the secret's out of the bag. Okay. That's because you're all right. Good. I'm, I'm glad you're all right. Welcome back to Spartan Up Podcast. We are at the Olympic Village Lodge here in Squaw Valley. This was the site of the 1960 Winter Olympics. We're sitting right in the room where incredible people are introduced. So we're going to introduce an incredible person. We have Ryan Mickler from Order of Man. Is that correct? That's right. Yep. That's Fantastic. Right. Uh, and um, so to tell us about Order of Man. Let's just start right at the start. So uh, so what, what, yeah. what are you all about? Yeah. So Order of Man is, is an organization. Really, the, our goal is to help men become better men. So we focus on anything from influence to leadership to fitness to mindset, anything that's going to help a man be a better father, a better husband, business owner, community leader. I mean, that's what I want to be. Mm-hmm. So we started an organization about two and a half years ago to help men do just that. And so we're equipping them with the tools and the skills that they need to, to be successful. Awesome. And when you say we, so 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 who's behind this issue? Well, it's it's me. I say I say we because it's it's Royal it's we. I, well, yeah. And it's I mean, I I use the name Order of Man. I wanted to create a brotherhood. I yeah. wanted to create a society. I wanted to create an organization or a fraternity where men could come together and be better collectively, be better together, uh, which is why we call it the Order of Man as yeah. opposed to the Order of Ryan or something else that doesn't <laughs> yeah. quite sound as good. Sure. Uh, so when I say we, I try to be inclusive because it is all of us are on this journey together. And so I don't try to isolate myself from it as much as I am included in it. That's why that's why I use that term. And, and what was the moment? What was the driving thing that made you say this, this is something I have to do? Yeah, I don't know if there was a moment necessarily. You know, it all adds up over time. I actually went through a, a separation with my wife and through a pretty long discovery process and journey about who I was and what I wasn't doing and how I was not showing up as a man, I, I discovered some things and I felt like I, I at this point have a moral obligation to uh, share a lot of what I went through, a lot of what I learned. And, uh, and I know there's a lot of guys struggling with some of the same things I was. So mm-hmm. that, that was probably, that was about nine years ago. Okay. Uh, and through this process, I just, I decided to throw my hat in the ring a couple of years ago, about three years ago. So, so I, I won't let you off easy because that was a great statement. I want you to actually tell me a bit about what some of those things were when you yeah, said you some of the things you're struggling with. Yeah, you bet. Uh, well, when my wife and I went through our separation for a long time, I actually blamed her. Mm-hmm. I put a lot of responsibility on her. Most people do. We do, them. right? I, I mean, everybody that. does. I and uh, I remember there was a... Uh, there was a moment where I, I came to the conclusion, maybe it's not all her fault. Maybe I actually have something to do with this. And it's an difficult. Aha an aha moment. Yeah. You know, the, the heavens <laughs> parted, the, the clouds parted, the heavens opened. It was amazing. I know, the mantle. That's sure. right. And everything from that point on has just been perfect. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, <laughs> But so, so at that moment, I really decided to take responsibility. I thought that our marriage was over. So what I did, instead of blaming everything on her and how could I change her and manipulate her to come back, I really focused on me. I decided I'm going to be the best man that I can be. And so I surrounded myself with good people. I found mentors. I started listening to uh, podcast CDs, reading books, doing everything I could to focus on me. And what was really interesting, and this is what I've realized, and a pretty big revelation for me is that when we focus on ourselves – People respond to that. Yep. I think there's so many people that focus on changing other people by influencing them somehow or manipulating them or coercing them. Uh, when if we just change ourselves, people will be influenced by that change. There's that, there's that adage, right? Put your own gas mask on first, right? You can't help others until you're coming from a good core place. So yeah, that's, that's good exactly that you, right. do, like, you do that deep work and then like the concentric rings of what you can put off is going to attract what you want to bring back to you as well. Yeah, and I think so many people focus on that external. And I think the external results that we see, whether it's, it could be fitness, it could be the relationships that we have or growth in our business, just comes as a natural byproduct of us focusing and turning that mirror around and focusing on ourselves. Yep. Yep. So, so when you got started on this journey, who were your influences? What were the, uh, the, the sources you drew from to start to 
to build your philosophy? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, there's there's a couple different podcasts that I that I personally listened to and was following a couple of years ago. Art of Manliness, Art of Charm, of course, Spartan Race was a big influence. These these companies and organizations that were working with uh, helping people with their mindset. I mean, that was the big thing for me is that getting this mindset piece right. So Paradigm shift. it really is like, yeah, just shift that mindset. Mm-hmm. And everything changes from there, yep. right? It's, yep. it's, a, it's an amazingly powerful tool that I think we overlook a lot. Yep. Uh, so, I, yeah, I listened to a ton of podcasts, read a ton of different books, and uh, decided to throw my hat in the ring. One thing I noticed is that there was a big disconnect from what we as men know we should be doing and what we're actually doing. And so I figured that my objective was to bridge the gap between what information we already have, okay, now how do we apply this into life and then impact our lives and the people that I feel like we have an obligation to serve. And I think that's a place where you and Johnny actually share a lot. It's like you guys are extremely fit and physical and have that side of the traditional manliness concept, but also have that like deep emotional, it seems like, understanding and the the willingness to go there and explore what that looks like from the man the order of man perspective right and well it's been hard no one mentoring that i feel like and that's true and, there's, and there's very few people that and you think about like right. guys in general i think we're i think we are pretty guarded right and so we don't want to do that deep society work, right? says like, no, you we're have to no, be no we're not no we're not guarded <laughs> no, but, the, but a society says like to be like there's, right there's not really a whole lot of um open forum for that type of a conversation absolutely it's from my perspective but you no i think are, you're you i think you're men. absolutely right yeah i think <laughs> <laughs> yes we are <laughs> we're men, men. <laughs> i think of well, men in tights that's i thought you were going <laughs> there i was no, like I she didn't say in tights though that, 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 that brings me to sort of a two-part question i want to ask you sure and and um i'm gonna ask you Do both you wear parts tights? and then I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll let you answer them uh, in order um so i'm assuming that you know, in, in your journey, your own journey, and, and bring other people into it, you'll have identified some some common elements, some things that you say, these are the things that really are common to all of us. But I'm also assuming that as this grows, and it's a pretty big tent where you're not saying, this is exactly who a man is, exactly what a man has to sure. be, they all have to be exactly like me. And, you know, there are so many different ways we can express that. And so I'm wondering if you can answer sort of a two-part question. The first is, what do you think the core elements are that are elemental to being a good man? And then where what are the variations that you would say these are things that I've actually been kind of surprised by that these things that I thought maybe everyone had to be this way I'm now finding out you can be this way and and have it be just as valid yeah that's a really good point so this is challenging I actually ask every single one of my podcast guests this question what does it mean to be a man and of course nobody's come up with the same answer right they're all different but what I've realized and, and figured out is that it's, it's usually narrowed down into three distinct categories so what it means to be a man a man is a protector He's a provider, and he's a presider. He leads. And in addition to that, he's wow. accountable and responsible for himself, right? That's good. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. So, yeah, I mean, look at, look at any situation. Look at any scenario. And, and the nice thing about categorizing it that way is that it is very broad. Even think about provision. When I say provider, most men and women, too, will think, oh, financial provision. But that's not necessarily the case either. We see more and more women going to the workforce. We see even men staying at home. Uh, provision is not just financial. It could be. And so to answer the second part of your question, what's surprising or enlightening about this, uh, as a man that wants to provide for his family and the people he cares about, it could be emotional provision or mental provision, spiritual provision. These are all things that I'm learning, and it kind of expands the definition of what it means to be a man, but keeps it in the parameter of I'm supposed to provide for my family. I think think that's really interesting, too, because my mom's actually writing a book kind of similar on this topic. But there has seemingly been a lot of role shifted and a lot more females taking on more of the traditional male attributes of like being the breadwinners, the providers or um, in the workforce or, you know, a whole, a whole number of different things. And I think it's really interesting kind of redefining what, what those different paradigms are within this new changing realm. And it is. Here's the deal is because men, I, I think generally speaking, a lot of men are almost like, okay, now what? You know, like, I I don't need to provide the same way I always did because women are entering the workforce. Yeah, women are like, I can provide for myself. Right. I mean, I kind of think it's a disservice. Please uh, forgive everyone. It's like, we're like, don't open the door for me. I think there's so much to, like, be said about chivalry. Right. And, like, 
honoring those types of relationships. And everyone, of course, is entitled to however they believe about it. But I think it's like really lovely when some of those things still exist. And I think a huge part of what we always talk about in a lot of like the wilderness skills and kind of those circles that I hang out in is there's really been a loss of a rite of passage. Like mm -hmm. when when men are when boys are acknowledged as men, right? Because there's not so so many places in our society for that type of a of a Whatever. I don't know. Yeah, if, just, yeah no, I agree. And I mean, even look at even look at Spartan, for example. I mean, this right. is a perfect opportunity to create, in a way, your own rite of passage. Yep. You know, you're doing difficult things. You're doing challenging things. It's not just physical. It's also mental. Right. There's there's a completion to it. There's a, a mindset change. I remember my very first Spartan race, and things just clicked and changed for me. Yep. Uh, but the, you're right. These things are going away. I think. And a brotherhood, important. right? Because I mean, I think that's. So much community is built out, Absolutely. Of, out of this. Absolutely. But, so, uh, hey, we're going to talk a lot more about this, and uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, I want to hear about um, uh, what you're going to do with this, what, what, what it is that you're trying to do in the world, like the, 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 the end game with all this for you. Sounds good. Cool. Hey, Spartans, as you're probably aware, Four Sigmatics Mushroom Drinks is now a sponsor of Spartan uh, Podcast. We've been uh, here at our beautiful breakfast. we got our good friend, the Jackfruit. And our great friends, uh, cordyceps. Johnny, you know what a cordyceps is? You were starting to tell me. <laughs> so, so the, the the background for this. So we're talking about the the different drinks and uh, and which ones we like the most, which ones uh, impacted us different ways, things like that. And I mentioned that the mushroom coffee, good in and of itself, but the cordyceps mushroom elixir was the one that I actually found gave me a, a really nice, I don't want to use the word jolt because jolt sounds like startling, but it's just a really nice lift. And when I was talking about that, you were telling me where cordyceps mushrooms come from, and it's something to do with growing in the head of an insect. Yeah, which is awesome <laughs> because it's been found to have some of the like strongest you know, um, anti-cancer properties, some of the most medicinal properties of any of the mushrooms. And he was like, see this little mushroom? That's going to save the world, right? But, um, but no, quite honestly, I really, really enjoyed this one. And... Um, one thing that I found, it was really great to actually get the sample kit because if somebody just sent me one of their teas, it might be hit and miss. Like, for example, I really like their mushroom coffee. It's delicious. got a little bit of bitterness to it. Um, and, you know, I, I would drink that any day. Um, the other ones, you know, the, the taste, there would be one that I love and another one that's, that's you know, it doesn't hit me quite as well. My, my wife really liked the cocoa. She didn't like the... Um, the matcha as much. Um, but, but, you know, different people have different tastes. But th this cordyceps, I honestly truly found with each sip, there was, I, I, I looked forward to it. I knew that as I swallowed that, there was something good coming with it. And I don't know a lot about mushrooms. I, uh, what I do know is that we're finding out more and more and more that, you know, it's funny too, because when people say mushrooms, they might think there are eight different kinds of mushrooms when they go into the um, Welcome to the wild the world store. of mycology. It's something, in the, it's, it's, literally mycology. In the, it's literally in the millions, isn't it? Millions of different kinds of mushrooms? Um, probably, yeah. I mean, there, and, and even just the, the, the ones that, you know, are identifiable, it takes, in terms of like the foraging world, there's a fine line between mycology and other plants just because it is, there are so many ones that look like other ones and poisonous ones. And it's it's a really, like, delicate and beautiful art to understand, be able to identify those. But, like, that's why I go to, like, a Paul Stamets or a Fungi Perfecti, and there's so much to learn about it. But cordyceps, yeah, I mean, cordyceps, you're right, because they're good for, like, energy, appetite, libido, endurance. Like, this is this is the Spartan mushroom. Well, that's why my wife really enjoyed my having the cordyceps. <laughs> I didn't know All right. that part. Speaking well, of libido, you know, we're going to go back, back to, to the episode. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Clearly, we're getting some energy from these mushrooms. Yeah. So, you know? foursigmatic.com <laughs> so, slash Spartan. Exactly. F O U R S I G M A T I C. Dot com slash Spartan. And what code can they use, Johnny? If they use the code Spartan, they'll get 15% off all Four Sigmatic products. Come chaga with us. Nice. Okay. Oh, that was really fun cutting like two cords of wood out there, guys. I feel like I've joined the order of man here. <laughs> okay. You're an honorary member. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> Blessings. Having a twin brother kind of already <laughs> feel that way. Um, <laughs> sacred family. Okay, but let's get back to the conversation. So whatever happened with you and your wife after you guys went through that emotional... Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I talked about changing myself, working on myself, and how people respond to that. So after about a three-month separation, I remember vividly the, uh, the moment that she actually called and said that she wanted to come back home. Uh, at the time, I had a six-month-old son, so she had left with him. And so that was probably the darkest time in my life, and yeah, it was challenging imagine. for sure. Yeah. So 
Uh, that was nine years ago. So this year we celebrated our 13-year wedding anniversary, and we've got four kids. Wow. So what's, what's the traditional present for 13 years? Like uh, a, What is... A what high five? <laughs> <laughs> we act, you know, it's funny you bring up the traditional weddings because we, uh, gifts because we actually or anniversary gifts because we actually do that. We follow the the traditional. I can feel that energy. It's coming it's, on. it's 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 kind of fun to do it that way. It's, but now that you say that, I can't really remember. Uh, what? All right, we we'll look it up. I believe, look, it's, look it's, I believe it's a black cat. A black cat. Knock on right. wood, Johnny. That's right. <laughs> Under a ladder. So all that stuff. Yeah, I can't remember what it is, but uh, I'm sure we followed it. But that's great. So what? What? How? What is that conversation around like dealing with? women and relationships and do you look to other people to kind of fulfill that within like the information that you're putting out or how do you you guys I think you guys do retreats and things and what yeah what's the format of that kind of looking like yeah I mean about those conversations uh, you know everybody's listening to this digitally right they're listening to it on the podcast or wherever they're listening some of them are to watching it, it. So. Yeah, still, yeah. Di- still digital though right good I thing mean, you right. beard because and, and they are watching this on YouTube keep this calm yeah <laughs> yeah he's got a great beard <laughs> um <laughs> And, and as much as digital technology and, and being able to connect unlike we've ever been able to connect before is, is amazing, I think there is something to be said for personal interaction. You know, we're Couldn't here shoulder to shoulder. And yeah. so uh, same thing with events that you guys are doing. There's just something to be said that can't be replicated any other way. So last year we decided that we would do a live experience. It's a three and a half day experience in the mountains of southern Utah. And, uh, yeah, that's right. And uh, our, I mean, at the end of the day, my, my objective is to make the guys come uh, bleed, sweat, and cry. If we can make them bleed, sweat, and cry, then I feel like we've done our job. That sounds a lot like Spartan Race, actually. <laughs> That's the point, right? <laughs> for sure, for well, sure. Well, I mean, you model what works. I mean, there's, yeah. there's elements of Spartan Race that I, I really, really enjoy, and, and I feel like more men need to be exposed to it. So yep. we model what works and make it our own. There's, um, there's a great school I've worked with called the School of Lost Borders, and they're reinitiating rites of passage in modern-day society. And they do men's fast, and they do women's fast and things. And um, I had the great pleasure of going and uh, sitting out in the desert. You drink water for a couple days. And um, I, I don't know. I think, I think it's a really powerful experience that, that even if you do it for a couple hours or if you, you do it at some point. I agree. I agree. I mean, I did the, uh, and I told you guys last year around this time, it's probably about 13 months ago, uh, participated in the Spartan Agogi. Oh, yeah. Which There's was, a vision quest for you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like, I had no idea what I was getting myself <laughs> yeah. into. Uh, fortunately, I'd spent some time in the military, and I kind of knew the mind game thing that was going on a little bit. I think that gave me an advantage, but uh, that was a challenge, and there was moments where I wanted to quit, but because I didn't quit, it made me a stronger person moving forward, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally and a better father and husband and everything else. So. I think, And I think that's one of the major takeaways, right, is you stuck with your marriage, right, through the hard times. You stick with the race through the hard obstacles, and then ultimately... You come out stronger and better, and the relationships is stronger, and your fortitude is stronger. And yeah, uh, uh, something you touched on there too about the idea about finishing that race and being able to tap into that. Um, I've had the opportunity to lead a number of the death races, and the people that I've met through that, by accomplishment, it addresses some insecurity because we always go through life, you know, wanting to be something that maybe sometimes we don't think we are. And if you can go and actually go through those experiences where you find out that maybe you are as strong as you want to be. E- even if it goes through moments of questioning that. Um, I always joke that the most sensitive, open, kind, loving, um, you know, least hard-shelled people I know are some of the toughest, biggest, meanest guys. Anyway. Absolutely, and some and of the and toughest, biggest, meanest guys are the first are ones the others, to leave. Yeah, first ones well, to tap, well, yeah. well, but, but, but it, it's amazing how um, I have a great friend, Kevin Lowe, who's a, a veterinarian down in Alabama, who, you know, you look at Kevin, he is just, he is the manliest man and he is the softest, sweetest guy. And I just, I really enjoy being around experiences that allow people to, to move beyond that need to prove themselves physically to where they can just let down their guard and be real. Right. And uh, so tell me about your experience with that with the guys. Well, it's, I mean, it's a good, you're talking about ego now, right? Yeah. And I think men, men and women are guilty of this. We fall into this trap all the time. We want to be right. We want to, we, we, we want to prove that we know what we're doing or that we're important or mm-hmm. whatever it may be. And uh, what I've realized is that that ego is is the enemy. I yep. mean, it truly is. It gets in your own ego way. Ego is the enemy. Ego is the enemy. Nice. And I talk about humility being strength. If somebody can come into a situation or organization or a project or relationship with a humble heart mm-hmm. and recognize and realize, man, I don't know everything. I want to learn. I want to know. That's the position of strength. That's a la- that allows you to see the blind spots that you wouldn't see if you have this shell or this barrier or wall of, of, of ego and pride. Yeah, sure. And, and the idea that it allows you to accept 
exactly. you know, and, and, and so often we won't ask for help. We won't do those things because we need to project strength. Right. And there's so much strength in being open to new ideas and to help from other people. Definitely. Yeah. And I think, you know, to overcome that, and I know we want to talk about just some, some important items that people can actually take away from, sure. from what this is. I think finding things that are difficult to do. Mm-hmm. Like put yourself in difficult situations, not dangerous situations, sure. but difficult situations that are going to test you physically, mentally, emotionally. The more that we can spiritually, do that, artistically, everything, everything. Yeah. And, and, as and, and, often as you can place yourself in uncomfortable situations. And a question yeah. with that, because you're going to fail sometimes. How do you deal of with that? Of course. I mean, isn't that kind of the point? I sure. mean, the point is to kind of recognize what your perceived limits are, uh, what your limits are currently, and to help overcome those things. Uh, I think so many people are worried about getting it right. I think the better approach to life is that this is just a process of experimentation. Sure. And I think if we approach it with uh, the idea that I'm just experimenting, I'm going to go do a Spartan race to experiment, mm-hmm. uh, I think we actually give ourselves permission to fail and permission to try something that we probably wouldn't have tried before. Absolutely. And, and in other areas of your life as well, just Absolutely. anywhere. hundred percent. Yeah. All of this stuff translates. You can't, you can't make a decision in a vacuum. Yeah. So if you make a decision with your relationship, that's going to permeate and, 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 and translate over into other areas of your life and vice versa. So, so what's next for you? What are, what are you doing now? When you leave here today, what's your next project? What are you excited about? What, uh, where are you taking this? Yeah. So we've got some new events coming up. We've got one in the spring. Um, I actually want to do a, an event. Uh, it's more of a rite of passage event. Uh, it's going to be a little bit harder. I don't anticipate more than 50% of the people that come actually at leaving the event. Mm-hmm. I want to make it very, very challenging. Uh, so that's that's been on my Johnny radar. Johnny can help you do that. Yeah. There you go. We have some experience. Based we'll on what it. I've been yeah. part of, I know that's I'll true. come Palo Santo, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, wait, I'm a female. Okay, blessings. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're there in spirit with yeah. us. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's been exciting. We've got a book in the works. I mean, I'm, I, I, I try to do what I talk about doing. So mm-hmm. the things that scare me, uh, those are the things that I'm, I'm trying to do. Cool. Yeah. And so when people want to find out more about the, uh, the Order of Man, where do they go? Yeah, orderofman.com is our headquarters, <laughs> so you can find everything we're doing there. And then social media is all at Order of Man. You, you can't miss us. You'll find us. Cool. Um, in Joe's honor, favorite exercise? Oh, man, favorite <laughs> exercise. I don't, I don't know that I have a... I, favorite's not the right word. Okay. You know what I, I mean? I agree. Like, yeah, that's like people like, what's your favorite plant? It's like, yeah, it's like impossible. Know, <laughs> like, what's the... What's like the uh, burpees are always, I mean, that's, it's not my favorite, but it's, it's the best, right? Right. It's the best. Uh, they are the best, actually. Okay, so do burpees and be a warrior of the ego with a humble heart. Yes, 100%. Okay. Love it. There you Thanks go. Nice for... summary, Sephra. Thanks. Yeah. We should have just started with that. I know. Ended Blessings. It. All right. The Order of Man, I hope. And then you guys must have some cool, like, Order of the Brotherhood type. We're, we do. Gotta... We do have some of that stuff. Yeah, and we're working some... on that more and more. So Secret society. Type That's stuff. right. We can't tell Love you it. about it. But... I know. Don't worry. I'll be like Scout Ninja in the That's woods. Right. Like, never know I'm there. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, Thank thanks you so much. Yeah. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Very, very appreciate much, man. Thank you. That was some powerful stuff in there. Ryan, he's a neat guy. Uh, you know, obviously, he's not the first guy to have this idea about creating a, a forum to to help sort of uh, promote brotherhood and, and develop the the positive masculinity. You know, you go back to John Bly, and uh, and and you know, it's been around for a while. But, but Ryan has really um, created a community, and I think that's a huge part of what he's doing is creating a community where uh, people can share ideas, can 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 discuss. Um, uh, strategies, but what I thought was the most important thing that I got out of this is when he talked about taking responsibility, and we talked about his marriage, and and you know in the separation how easy it was to blame her and find fault in her and 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 put everything out there, and it wasn't until he really stopped and took stock of where he was lacking, and where he needed to step up, where he really needed to show up differently. Suddenly, it changed everything. Doesn't that um, apply to every interaction we have in life? Like, shouldn't we take ownership? I don't know what your theory is from the military, but at the end of the day. If um, we could argue and say, oh, that person's just not understanding me, or that person's this, but shouldn't you, that means you're not communicating well, or that, right? Like, well, it depends on how much, how much responsibility you're willing to take, right? I mean, watch the great coaches, right? Uh, or, or the great quarterbacks or whatever, even after the losses. You know, if the players didn't play well, or, or, or the coach will still say, I didn't train them well enough. I didn't do my job. I didn't prepare them. I didn't. So you, you take things and you internalize them. Okay, why? why my wife and I had an argument. But that's okay, still but, all but, ego, right? The no, I, no, I don't think it's ego. I think, in fact, I think it's putting ego aside. You could say, an, ego, an egotist would say, well, I don't know why they didn't play well. I, 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 did, trained, I, did, I right, trained right. them perfectly. Right. They, they, did, didn't they just didn't perform. They didn't yeah. execute. So when you're in a one-on-one argument with your wife or your husband or something like that, you say, well, you know, you're all screwed up and stuff. But, you know, take a step back and figure out 
you're part of that argument. I just right? think you get further in life. And not easy to do. I certainly haven't done it my whole life. Um, just to take ownership. Yep. And, and so... Um, Ma- Mary and I were talking a little bit about this, about the idea that um, what he talked about was really taking inventory. And, and there was a term that you used. What was it? Taking fearless... Searching and fearless moral inventory. But the idea of really how smart people. powerful it is to actually do a deep dive and not just the surface of what can I change quickly or what can I pretend is different, but to really look and see where do I need to take responsibility in my life. And, and you know, he talks about um, the order of man and he talks about how important it is to, what did he say, provide, protect, and preside. But I think what it really means is stepping up. And this is not just for men. This is for men and women, for people in general. But the importance of stepping up and not being afraid, you know, like, you know, we think that alpha means that you have to push people out of your way. And that's not it at all. You pull them along with you. But it's not until you're really willing to take it on and say, I'm going to I'm going to take responsibility for this 100 percent and take a really honest look at what I need to do to improve myself that you're actually going to be able to provide and protect and preside better for other people. I think I think what he's doing is like helping to educate and create a conversation and kind of a form around that. So the Latin root for educate is to lead, right? And so when you're a leader, it's when you're able to like provide intelligence and wisdom that can allow you to zoom out and take some pause and and I really like when he encourages like the vision quest part, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like the 3 to 5 days in in the desert. And I've done it before, and you're not hungry, and it's like a spiritual vacation. So, yeah. well, we, we, we've talked. <laughs> it's like about, you can about, really get to know. Yeah, we've yourself. talked before about that's one of the real powerful things about endurance sports. And the longer the race, the more it becomes emotional to spiritual, not just physical. You know, if you're if you're running. 10K, you're doing it on, on, on physical. When you're running 26K, but, but you're getting into the emotion. Carl knows that from the military, right? Anybody can be good when things are good. Yeah, I mean, it's, what's the old expression? It's easy to captain a ship in a calm harbor, right? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's yeah. when things get rough and rocky and the rest of it, you know? And, so, and that's what but, you do in the military, test people. Under, yeah, you, you, do. you do. in a marriage, it seems like. I haven't it, been there the yet. endurance but. and stuff, and then you have <laughs> the endurance like race. Endurance race. Life is basically an endurance race, right? And so you could chop it up, but... But I think it's important when we're talking about this conversation that he's kind of trying to get together in a community. We live in changing times. And, I, you know, you make up your own mind, good, bad, roles, men and women, children, whatever. Things are changing. Mm-hmm. And, and not everybody knows what the rules are at all the times. Mm-hmm. And so it becomes a little bit confusing. And even if you're progressive, let's say, and you want to... Uh, help some of these changes. You, 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 it's there's missteps. You see people misstepping all the time, and you use a wrong gender, or you do something with the right intent, and find out that you've um, harmed somebody emotionally somehow or whatever. It's it's a it's an interesting but challenging and changing time. So I think it's a good time to have these conversations and say, what is man? What should it be? Where are we going? Doesn't what does it just do? apply to men, though? No, I mean, it doesn't. Well, but, I mean, yeah. but, 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 but he does in his context. You know, it's about healthy masculinity, too. And, and in our society, there's a real problem with hyper-masculinity. Boys don't cry. Right. And now you've got boys who don't know how to express themselves and men with all these repressed emotion things. So it's the idea about... My, my, my boys cry every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Joe doesn't exactly <laughs> sing to wake them up in the morning. After the exercise. <laughs> but, but, but at the same time, you know, it's funny too. Uh, you know, we, we, we sort of are you trying to make on. sure that everyone understands that this isn't just about masculinity because you put your girls through the same stuff you put your boys through too. Like, we're, we're, we are gender neutral, gender neutral in our house. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> That's it. I... I don't even think it has to do with gender, you know, like that that's become too convoluted of a topic even. It just has to do with like taking time and space to build a community that's receptive to your humanism, right? And I think he By the way, we're doing pretty like, good. I mean, in the old days, right? The Indians would come over and kill one of us right about or, now. Or, or, or we might... Wait, why? Who? Would Where are we? Or Sephra would probably <laughs> eat or, Johnny. Or, 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 If we could be more historically correct, we actually did a lot more damage to them. No, no. I meant one way or the other. I know, I know. We were attacking each other. We were killing each other. Not that this isn't happening all over the world right now, but... I don't really but know what's going on anymore. But not on a micro level like it used to, right? Yeah, no, no, no. It, it, you're right. It's funny because as much as we, the news feeds us all the bad news, it's actually, what do they say, the most peaceful time in human history. Seven billion people and are actually crime is going way down in the yep. first world for whatever reason. 
Hey, we so. got to send Joe to the dentist more often. Kumbaya. Things are great. Things are great. You know what? Take a hot shower. We're Eat close a down the company. We're, There's we're, no we're not calling us Barton anymore. It's going to be shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... but, but <laughs> The idea that we talk a lot about community, and we talk about the Spartan community and and the the Order of Man community, and you talk about, you know, when we talk to the guys from Oscar Mike, they talked about the importance of that military community, and people people really do lack community in so many ways. You know, so many companies they'll 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 preach about. Wait, why? Because I just sit on my phone all day, and doesn't that build my community? You see anybody? I mean, you've seen the memes, right? You you go in any restaurant, people, everybody. I do it. I'm sitting next. What? I should bring my phone to dinner, Joe. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but but you know what? Whether whether it's the Order of Man. Whether it's a a Spartan (laughs) race, whatever the whatever (laughs) the excuse is to set that aside, to break down those barriers and to be in a group. So when when a starting wave of three hundred people go off in a Spartan race, that's my my day job as Spartan race director. When I see a a wave of three hundred people go out, those three hundred people aren't on their phones. They're not worried about uh, paying the mortgage. They're going out to challenge themselves for thirty, sixty. 90, That's why we do what we minutes. do. Exactly, right? And so when you go to these meetings and you sit down and you, and you talk about honest things, um, it really is changing the the context and the framework so that you get out of your own way. And so you do put down your phone. So you do stop worrying about the mundane things day to day. And any excuse to do that is, is I think, a really valuable way to get in touch with ourselves. And we talk about deep work and deep dives and, you know, long runs, and you can't just... Um, change the channel you actually have to deal with that thought that's in your mind um it's pretty powerful stuff well i'm, I'm just happy to be in this community right here yeah. with the four of you kumbaya yeah. and, and plus plus marion <laughs> right back at you with, with, with that said um yeah if, if you want to spend more time in this community what we encourage you to do go to spartan.com slash podcast Follow us, subscribe at iTunes, at YouTube, anywhere you watch your podcasts. And I say watch because a lot of people just listen, which is great. But then you would not see that Joe has just come from the <laughs> dentist today. And if you're only listening, you'll think he's drunk, whereas in fact, he has half his mouth frozen from a root canal. Thank you for watching another epic story of success. If you like our message, please share Spartan Up with your friends and subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you catch our show, maybe in the woods. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Four Sigmatic. Join the mushroom coffee revolution at foursigmatic.com slash Spartan. This is Ryan Mishler, Order of Man, close, take one. (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Not too many men here. These men are in great order.